Hi there, my name is Gregory Scott and this is my game, Armored Commander 2. This week I'm showing off the July 28th, 2017 weekly build. Um, as with before, these weekly builds are kind of a snapshot of where the game is at this week in development. As the warning down here reminds you, it has bugs, incomplete features, it's still a work in progress. It's not even close to being complete enough to be called an alpha yet, but I wanted to give interested players a taste of what I was working on and how the game was coming along. So I'm going to play through a uh, scenario. This is the same builds that you can download right now from armoredcommander.com. Uh, so if you're interested in trying it out, uh, if you, and you have a Windows machine, you can download it and you can play it uh, for free. So let's uh, give it a try. Let's start a new scenario. And as before, we are in a Panzer 35T uh, tank, which is probably one of the best armored and best armed uh, German tanks of the early war. Um, I'm trying to think uh, differences from last week's build, mostly behind the scenes, not necessarily um, immediately visible. Most of the things had to do with the enemy AI um, generating enemy units, placing them in the map. There's going to be a, a, a greater diversity of enemy units that we're going to encounter, so we're going to have to be careful, um, especially two of the guns are 75 millimeters, so if they get if they do get a hit on us, it's pretty much over. Um, I haven't enabled debug mode. Uh, one of the things I did this week was add a bunch of um, god commands, like debug commands, to help me when I'm developing the program that can make you invincible, uh, that can make um, give you an extra turn automatically on every move. I don't have any of that um, enabled at the moment, so if I get hit and if the shot penetrates, my game ends. So let's see if we can capture all three objectives before the time limit and before our tank is destroyed. So right off the bat, we run into a possible, uh, possible enemy unit. Some of these are going to be dummy units representing um, false reports or a crew a crew person thought they saw something there but some, uh, um, there wasn't actually anything there you won't know until you get close or until it fires at you whether or not it's a real uh, it's a real enemy but I'm gonna play it safe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head forward onto this hill which will also give me a better view um, of this area around here Another thing that I changed recently, I can't remember if it was a feature of last week's build or not, is that if there are enemy units out of your line of sight, so this dark area is, uh, represents parts of the map that your crewmen in the tank can't see, if there is anything out there, it won't be displayed. It'll only be displayed once you can actually physically see it. So let's run the tank up the hill. So from this uh, vantage point, we can only see a very small part. So I'm gonna go one more square, one more hex forward. That gives us a good view. And as it turns out, both of those units were dummies. There wasn't actually anything there, which is good for us because it means that we might stay alive a little longer. So I'm going to keep moving forward. I'll go along the road for a little bit. This was recently added. This is an area of rough ground, which means that if you move through it, there's a higher chance that you are that you miss your next turn, but otherwise it doesn't have any effect on line of sight and it doesn't count as a terrain feature for any other reason. It's just it's just there to slow uh, to slow moving through that area. Alright, so we're getting close to the nearest of our three objectives that we have to capture to win the scenario. There is a unconfirmed possible uh, enemy unit in the objective, and my guess is that based on what I know about how the game places enemy units, I'm guessing that this is not a dummy unit. This is probably a real one if it's, uh, if it's guarding the objective. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to use the, these woods as cover and try to pop out either here or here to, to get a shot at it. Oh great, alright, there's two of them now. So now we have two unknown units, one in the objective and one who just moved in next to him. We'll see what happens. Nothing yet. So let's pop out here and see what we can see. So one of them is revealed to be a TKS 20mm. This is a tankette. This is a the very small tracked um, lightly armored vehicle. It does have a 20 millimeter gun, which on our frontal armor is not too much of a threat, but um, it does it does have a chance to kill us. So uh, first thing it does is it takes a shot at us. We moved the last turn, so it's harder to hit us. Um, the the Panzer 35T is still a relatively small tank, so there's another minus one, and we get a bonus for being in this, in this terrain. So um, on the standard two six-sided die roll needs a three or less, which is good for us. Good. So it missed. And its friend is also another TK, uh, TKS 20mm. So we have two small tankettes 
one of which, um, as you can see in the hex info down here, has us has one level um, target acquisition on us. But now we're going to stop here, go into the weapons menu, and we're going to get some target ac acquisition on him. So we're going to fire up the 37 millimeter main gun. We're loaded with armor penetrating rounds. We're reloading with armor penetrating rounds, which is good. Target the closest uh, tank yet and fire. So unfortunately, at this um, for the for this turn, since we moved in our last turn, we're st we still suffer a minus two to hit, and it's a very small target, so there's a base minus two to hit. Next turn, we'll lose this modifier and hopefully gain some acquired target modifiers too. So we should get a better hit to hit score than less than or equal to five. So we hit our with our first attack. It's got an AP hit. The results of that hit will be f will be figured out at the end of our activation. And I maintained rate of fire, which means if I want to, I can fire again. And I'm going to go for it, just to make absolutely sure that this tank yet uh, is taken out. Second shot missed, but I maintained rate of fire. I'm just going to keep plugging him as long as I can do. And and at this moment, I've gained the maximum of acquired target bonus that I can get. So a very respectable seven or less to hit. Keep going. I'm just going to keep going until I lose rate of fire, and that's it. So we missed the attack. I think I, I got a total of two hits, and we'll see if either of them penetrate. Um, now, at this point, if I wanted to, I can cycle between my different weapons. Um, I can't use the coaxial machine gun because if I, I fired the main gun, you can only choose one or the other. Um, I could fire the hull MG, but at this point, the um, machine guns and other light arms have no effect on anything that has any um, armor. In the future, it'll be possible to do to try a armor penetration shot with an MG. Um, it's not easy. You, you do have a chance of having an effect on very light armor if it's like, say, zero or one. So on the side of even a Panzer 35T, you would have a chance of penetrating with with the machine gun. Uh, but at this moment, that hasn't been added to the game, so it would have no effect anyway. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to end my action, and we'll see how those shots resolve. So base roll. And so this this number is determined by the, the type of gun, the caliber of gun that did the shooting. We start at 8. Um, it has armor of 1. Um, where do we hit it? Um, upper hull um, on the front. Uh, it's not a turret. It, if we would have hit the turret, but it doesn't have a turret. It just has kind of this upper part. It can't actually swing around. So uh, we hit it on the upper hull. Uh, minus 1 modifier because of the armor. We have to roll a 7 or less to penetrate. And we get 2 chances because we got 2 hits. And the first one penetrated, that's enough to knock it out. So its friend is trying to wreak vengeance and is going to shoot at us with a three or less to hit. And it missed. So at this point, I don't think it makes sense to lose the cover that we have and to gain, to gain a, uh, a penalty for moving. Um, I'm going to stay put. I'm going to use the 37 millimeter again, and I'm going to fire at the other tank yet. Unfortunately, it is in some terrain here, so it's going to be harder to hit. Also, one of the things that still needs to be done is a command to get your loader to restock the ready rack. So from now on, from now until the end of the scenario, unfortunately, we can't use the ready rack for um, armor penetrating uh, ammo. Using the ready rack, uh, it's like a bin of it's like a bin of shells very close to the loader, where um, it's it's much quicker for him to lo reload the shells. Using that gives you a big bonus to maintaining rate of fire. So we've lost that. We'll get fewer rate of fire shots in the future until I you know, until I code that feature, which should happen, uh, which happen soon. Another thing that I added, I think also this week. If you move your uh, little command selection cursor down to the fire command, it will give you a preview of what your chance is to hit, um, even before even before you, you choose the command. So from here, you can see you, you have to roll a 5 less. If you wanted to, you could cancel out of this and choose do something else. Um, but it's, it's actually kind of handy here that it will immediately give you a percentage um, chance. And the AI now... Um, calculates the percent chance of various attacks that it can do. Of course, at this point, there's only one player unit, so there's, there's usually only one attack. But they cycle through all the weapons on, on available to them, and they try to figure out what is the most effective uh, attack that I can do, and they'll choose uh, that one. So hopefully, um, and especially when I add in other allied friendly units on the player side, the AI units will make hopefully semi-intelligent choices about what they do and and try to offer up a serious threat. So let's fire at the other tank hit. We, uh, we hit, so we got an AP hit, we did not maintain rate of fire. 
and the shot bounced off. So it's a lightly armored tank at, but it still has some armor. We must have hit. We, we must have hit this um, this angled piece right here because it just bounced right off. So it got lucky, and it fires back. Luckily, it missed. Let's just keep on firing. So we hit and maintain rate of fire. Let's do it again. Two hits, hopefully one of them, yep, and the first one penetrates. So two tankettes are gone, and we're now unseen by the enemy. Something happened over here. All right, there's definitely an unknown unit. As I said, there's still bugs in the game. One of the bugs is that sometimes it will display things about units that are not in the player's line of sight, and sometimes as well, units that are outside of the player's line of sight will actually get a line of sight on the player and fire back. So I'm still working on the calculations. It takes into account um, terrain height, the, the height of the various features in the terrain, like the trees or, um, or the fields, and um, uh, basically does a separate line of sight for every hex and determines whether or not that unit can see that particular hex. So I'm still working, still working out the bugs. Hopefully stuff like this will not happen in the future. But at least we know there's something lurking over there, which is, which is nice. Unfair, but nice. All right, let's grab this objective and end our action here so we capture it. So it's one out of three, and let's go over to these two units over here to see, try to deal with them. Now one thing you'll see, if two units actually stack in the same hex, it'll put a little two there to show you that. Not just one question mark, but there's two. All right, so one of them was definitely a dummy, and there was nothing there. And the other one was as well, so that's lucky for us. So let's head north, whatever this direction is, and um, try to capture this other objective, which is 1.6 kilometers away. We'll head out. So it's on the edge of the map. Might be something there. Might be a dummy unit. And there could be, there's prob probably at least one more in the area that we can't see. So I am going to try to play it safe and move up through these fields. Oh, there's the other one. So why don't I go? Yeah, I'll go grab this one first. Oh, all right. So it's happened again. So there's something out there that we can't see that's firing at us, um, which is not good. Uh, one thing that I did change either last week or the week before is that if you haven't identified a unit yet, even when it fires at you, you don't. It doesn't give away anything. Something is firing something at you. Um, it will tell you what type of an attack it is and what the final score to hit is. Um, but other than that, you don't really know anything because. Um, telling you some of the modifiers might give away what kind of a weapon it is. So it's some kind of machine gun, which only fired at us because at this point we're concealed. If it got a hit, then it would identify us and, and figure out what we are. So if it's a machine gun, I'm not all that worried about it. So it is a... So, oh, sorry, it's a seven-ton tank. All right, now I am worried about what, uh, what it is. Seven-ton tank. Um, it's armed. It fired its coax at us for some reason. I guess just as kind of ping us to try to figure out what we are. Um, but it fired its 37 millimeter gun at us. This is a good thing we're taking this in the front armor. Um, luckily it moved and we moved and we're a small target. So even though there's no terrain here, it's still four less to hit. I think I think at this point the only thing we can do is fire back because there's nowhere really to move. If we move up here, we're only getting closer. I guess we could try to take this um, terrain up here. Yeah, that might actually be a good idea. I think it's worth... Yeah, it's worth the risk. Well, we'll see. Nope, hit. Nine less to penetrate. And I'm down. That's it. All right, so that was that was evidently not the right not the right strategy. I should have just stayed put, kept my front armor, kept my front armor um, facing the target and just fired back. Because at this point, um, you see, uh, I got a shot on my side, so there was only a minus one modifier to the penetration roll, whereas if we're in the front, it'd be minus three. And I don't think it would have been close range either. So rather than a nine or less, it would have been a six or less. And it still would have, it still would have penetrated, but the odds would have been better. So that is it. We are dead. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at Armored Commander 2 and the way that it's coming along. I'm a little embarrassed because that was a very poor tactical decision, but it was also kind of uh, fun. So as I mentioned, if you want to give it a try, head to armoredcommander.com. You can download 
the weekly build, and you can see all of the, the strange uh, bugs and weird behavior that continue to plague this game in development, in progress. So again, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.